Andy, 29-7 to Ireland here against Wales in the first round of the Six Nations. What a flyer to get off to. Yeah, uh, really impressive uh, half, uh, particularly the first 20 minutes of the first half uh, was an excellent start and it almost blew Wales away. Um, four, con four tries, three converted, one penalty from Saxton. Uh, it could have been more. He missed he had a super game when he missed two very easy ones for a kicker of his calibre. Um, but overall, um, Ireland extremely impressive. Wales obviously under strength and those who played probably a little underwhelming, but I don't think they were allowed to play by that Irish side. So uh, well worth the win and uh, yeah, extremely impressive carrying on from a very impressive autumn series too. Definitely. And it was Bundy Aki who got over for the first try. It was a pass from Mac Hansen on his debut. Yeah, very impressive uh, from Mac Hansen throughout the game. Um, he seems like perhaps one of those players who, who uh, has the knack of being in the right place at the right time. Uh, his first touch in international rugby, a little fortuitous, was, uh, was a, a blocked grubber kick from Sexton that landed in Hansen's hands and he took that opportunity, ran 40 metres upfield, um, stayed involved in the play and then gave an assist to Bundyaki after three minutes. But uh, Hansen's involvement, as was Bucky, uh, Bundy Aki's involvement, were very, very consistent and they were varied in the game. Both of them were a threat running. Both of them got a lot of involvement in midfield and both of them distributed the ball excellently under pressure. So it gave Ireland that variation in their attack where they could be uh, a carrying threat in midfield and they also had distributors in midfield and, and it opened up space for people like Conway, Ringrose, um, which made us very unpredictable. So certainly Hansen's involvement, Bundy Aki's involvement in midfield, um, not to be underestimated, quite impactful. And what a story from him just to mention. Seven months in Ireland, he qualifies to play because of his mom, who is actually from born in Cork, came over from Australia to make his Irish debut to get man of the match. You don't hear this very often. Uh, certainly not at elite level sport. These type of stories are few and far between, perhaps 15, 20, 30 years ago. Um, from what I gather, uh, Andy Friend, the manager of, of Connacht, his son uh, was a drinking buddy of Mac Hansen back in Australia and had uh, observed him playing, shooting the lights out of club rugby and encouraged his father to take a chance uh, on a guy who was well, not well known, um, even down in Australian circles. Um, and the story has built from there rapidly um, in a six, seven month period. He's, uh, it's a testament to Andy Farrell too. It's a brave selection. Um, he was initially seen as, I suppose, a squad member in inclusion. Certainly by the media, he wasn't predicted to be a starter. But to then get thrown in the deep end in the first and very important Six Nations game uh, shows that Farrell is obviously putting huge emphasis and value on how players are training. Uh, and it's become quite apparent in recent days that Hansen's shot the lights out in training too and they're prepared to take that risk and give him a, a run. And I think he rewarded them in spades. Yeah, extremely impressive. And just to talk about Johnny Sexton, there was three miss or three penalties in that first half. There was two missed, and he converted one. Was it always the right option to go for it? Oh yeah, I think they were absolutely the right choices. Uh, I think Sexton had a superb game. Uh, again, I did this style of play that Ireland are, are using is is uh, arguably making him play some of his best rugby in an Irish shirt. Um, but. I think he'd be the most uh, frustrated or annoyed man in the country with those two missed kicks, uh, kicker of his calibre. They weren't in any way influential on the game. Um, and his, his kicks from the touchline, um, first one was outstanding and he had two, uh, two kind of fades on the right-hand side in the second half that you tend not to see from a kicker showed huge skill. So I don't think he'll lose any sleep over it. He will be frustrated. But yeah, they were the right choice to opt for the penalties. And we saw him on the ground, I think, twice. But the second time, it was a reckless challenge from Josh Adams. He got a yellow for it. It was a harsh challenge, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Uh, I mean, it was probably one inch, maybe less, half an inch away from a clear red card. Uh, Thomas Williams at nine had put in a speculative chip for uh, Adams to, to chase through. And as the b oval ball can bounce any direction, it bounced right between... Uh, the, the path of, of Sexton and, and Adams on a collision course, you would have expected uh, Adams to try and go for the ball, but he, he ignored it by nearly a meter and full on shoulder charge uh, Sexton, half an inch below the chin. It looked like a whiplash effect even for Sexton. Uh, the whole crowd here delighted to see him get up and play on from that and, and he didn't 
looked too worse for wear. Um, but Adams, it was it was quite reckless, cynical, and very very lucky to stay on the field. And Johnny let him know. He went straight up to him after just to tell him, you know, that was reckless. Yeah, and I think it was one of those ones when you watched it back on replay, it got worse and worse. Yeah. Um, different angles, you know, it was uh, people were curling toes here in the stadium looking at it for fear, obviously, of some damage to Sexton. But, uh, yeah, you know, you'd be well within your, your uh, rights to be a uh, non-plus way challenge like that. And, and the likes of Sexton has that fire in him. Yeah, so uh, choice words, no doubt. And Andrew Conway, he got over for two tries. He was impressive today. Yeah, uh, I think Conway was, was really a recipient of very good play inside him. Uh, nonetheless, his first try was an incredible finish. Uh, Ireland had been so creative in midfield, had held possession, always looked to threat, always looked for space. Um, and then Sexton unleashed this kind of wide, loopy ball. Um, Conway had to come in and almost slide, catch it on one knee with the cover defence. He had to get off his feet, get off his knees, and uh, with three or four tacklers around him, managed to just about reach out and get the ball down. But as, as finishes go for a right winger in international rugby, was superb. Uh, second try, easiest try he's probably ever going to score. He literally just had to catch it and touch it down. But the first one was superb. And just to speak about Wales, it's not the Wales that we're used to facing, I didn't think anyway. Um, I suppose they are you know, suffering a lot of injuries, but it, it was very tough for them today. They got, they got a try in the end, uh, came near the end, but uh, it, it was a lapse in concentration, really. It was lucky enough to get it. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a Welsh team that's missing seven you know, highly influential players, some of the greatest players the game's seen, and the likes of Alan Wynne-Jones with 160-odd caps. I think 700 caps amassed between those players missing for Wales um, and without doubt that's had an impact on them. Uh, then again you look at that Welsh starting back line littered with talent, littered with experience. Thomas Williams and Bigger at half back, uh, Liam Williams at full back kept really quiet um, and a bit of pace like Josh Adams in, in midfield. So they certainly had ability in the back line and I would have thought they had uh, a pack that, while not being as, as well known, were hopeful to be more competitive. But they, that pack were crushed by the Irish pack in the first 20, 30 minutes. And that was ultimately the, the decider in the game. I think the Welsh will come away um, bruised, battered, but I don't think they're as poor a side as they looked. I think it was more Irish quality play, particularly up front in that first 30. And what impressed you most, if you could say, from the November series, what we've seen them do against the All Blacks to now, what impressed you most from Ireland? Uh, so many things. I mean, if you look at, I can see, you can see Paul O'Connell in that team in terms of the, the accuracy in the line-out. We had 100% line-out success in a Six Nations International's top drawer. Yeah. You can see John Fogarty and how well we're scrummaging, very, very stable. You can see Mike Catt in the creativity in midfield. You can see wingers like Hansen and a centre like Bundiaki being used in, in a very, very different way, not always as the battering ram. You can see Simon Easter being their defence. You, you know, so what, what impresses me is that from all sides of their game, they're performing at a very high level. Um, and then in particular, if we were to focus on attack, this, this use of, um, I suppose, a triangle, for want of a better word, we're seeing very, very often two or three Irish forwards catching the ball near to the breakdown and having two or three options invariably choosing the right one sometimes they're hitting the first runner sometimes they're hitting the second runner sometimes they're hitting a guy out the back sometimes they're going themselves when they catch it and it makes it's done so well to such a high degree of accuracy under pressure that it makes us very hard to defend i don't think it's a case of of poor defense from wales i think it's it's really high quality attack from ireland and all in all i mean variation across the game input from different expertise um you know, a very healthy injury profile at the moment. But, but that play and attack, that kind of triangle formation and attack that we've used so well, to such great effect, um, has been one of the most impressive parts. We've seen uh, in the likes of Phil Jackson, legendary coaches using a triangle system in attack where you've got three, six, nine options at a time. We've seen Johan Cruyff do it with football teams, triangles in attack. Now we're seeing it being used to great effect in a rugby setting and it's really refreshing really creative um, and overall hope difficult to mark as well and difficult to predict so it doesn't mean we're going to be closed down too easily in the next few games. Yeah I think Ireland is really finding its style and that's very evident out there today. Gary Ringrose got in for Ireland's fourth try and um, I thought it was the best try of the day don't know what you thought Andy? Yeah uh, really exciting again it was um, 
it came from from Mac Hansen and uh, Bundy Aki getting the ball in midfield. Um, certainly Hansen getting involved coming off his wing. It's always really good to see wingers coming in into midfield. They they provide an extra man and an overlap, but then also the ability to catch and pass under pressure with a, with a rush tackler coming at you. Um, Mac Hansen gave it to Bundy Aki, who did the exact same, and set Ring Roads free. Uh, R- Ring Roads showed the kind of pace that perhaps we thought he didn't have two or three, four seasons ago where he could scorch up the outside, but he did. Um, there was a, there was a question mark, I think, on everyone's lips. Was he going to use um, Andrew Conway for potential hat-trick? Uh, he went himself, and I think it was ultimately the right choice. He, he just got outside that cover defence for a brilliant finish. Exciting finish. Great to see Ring Rose getting on the score sheet as well. I think he's been underrated and underestimated in his contribution in recent games. His All Blacks performance in November um, was so workmanlike and so effective, but it's nice to see him do the flash stuff too. And on the Irish bench, it was great to see so many come on. We've seen Peter O'Mahony, James Hume, Dan Sheehan. Brilliant to see all them getting a run because it really pushes on to have a lot of options going into this France game. Absolutely, and again, uh, I think O'Mahony has a, a new lease of life in this squad as an impact player. Um, he's come on and, and um, consistently been, been uh, a thorn in the side of oppositions with 15, 20 to go. He's a great line-out option. He's very, very uh, competitive for ball on the ground. Um, and that 15, 20 minute period, that experience coming in, it's added huge value to the Irish team every time he's come off the bench. Really exciting to see James Hume get a chance in an Irish jersey. He's, he's been very impressive in Ulster. He's, he's not your typical modern day centre. He looks like a, a slightly more slight footballing type of centre, which again falls into the, the positives that we're seeing in this Irish attack. Um, so yeah, um, augurs well. Dan Sheen's a very like for like replacement for Kelleher. One or two areas that we may be concerned with. Keen Keen Healy's obviously a great replacement for Porter, like for like. Not so sure on. Uh, you're not really going to replace Tyke Furlong with a like for like player. He's he's a kind of standout, best in the world in his position. We'll we'll be hopeful Finley Bealham can hold his own. I'm certain the likes of England and France are going to attack him if they get a chance. But well, hopefully he can manage that. And looking ahead to France now, they go to Paris next weekend. Did this game set them up for, I suppose, to get them ready for this challenge? Because this really is going to be a much bigger test. Yeah, I think um, yeah, it's, it's almost the key game already at the championship. You're, you know, without looking ahead of ourselves, if we can go over and get a result against one of the best French sides of the last 10 years, um, it would be a huge marker. Um, I still, I mean... I don't think the bookies are going to back us and I think that's probably right based on French form um, but I think this Irish team are going to go damn close over there next week First game I'm going to ask you who's going to win the Six Nations Andy uh, <laughs> I'm going to I said it Joe Malloy asked me last uh, week and I, I, I did go for Ireland so I'm going to stick with it for now not, nothing in that performance is uh, is telling me otherwise I'm not sure we can win in France uh, but I think France may slip up elsewhere uh, perhaps one of their away games and I think we may we may squeak it by yeah. Brilliant, Andy. Thank you. Thanks Ashley.